there's so many things that we take for granted each day. Let's consider a simple sip of that essential morning coffee. As your hand reaches for the mug and brings it to your mouth, you're not considering all the muscle contractions that allow you to do this. Nor do you notice that while you drink your coffee, the rest of your body is remaining still. Behind the scenes, our brains are working really hard to make sure this all goes smoothly. But what if, day by day, our brains were no longer able to direct us in our intended movements and instead started signaling our bodies to move in all sorts of unintended ways? This is the reality for many people with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease causes symptoms like uncontrollable shaking hands, difficulty walking and speaking, and constantly clenched muscles. And what scientists know is that the cause of Parkinson's disease is a loss of a brain chemical called dopamine. And while we're pretty sure that dopamine helps brain cells communicate properly with one another, how exactly it does this job across the brain is still unclear. So that's where people like me come in. I study Parkinson's disease in an area of the brain called the motor cortex. So why is the motor cortex special? Well, for any given movement, like grasping that coffee mug, it requires coordinated communication across many brain areas. But the motor cortex is the last of these brain areas to re receive the so-called move signal before it leaves your brain and travels to the rest of your body. You can think of the motor cortex as a metaphorical funnel in this way. It needs to allow just the right balance of move signals through. So my goal is to understand how dopamine plays a role in this communication within the motor cortex. So the way I study this is in a simulated Parkinson's disease in a mouse. And in this way, I'm able to look at the brain at a much higher level of detail than I would be able to in an actual Parkinson's patient. My work involves listening in on the communications of brain cells in the motor cortex. I listen to the move signals they receive and how they respond. And what my results have shown is that dopamine um, acts as the neck of this metaphorical funnel. It can completely control how a cell in the motor cortex responds, the magnitude of its response. And furthermore, when a brain is depleted of dopamine, suddenly the neck widens and more move signals are allowed through. And we find that more signals are leaving the motor cortex, which might be contributing to those uncontrollable symptoms that I mentioned earlier. So the next step would be able to fi uh, would be finding a way to correct for this improper communication before real problems start to occur. So my hope is that my work is a piece of the larger puzzle of this disorder. And with each advancement in knowledge, we're able to better support those with Parkinson's disease and work towards a cure.